Welcome to our Grow Groups. We're continuing to thinking about listening to the King, listening to what Jesus teaches us on the Sermon on the Mount. And we're thinking today in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 19 to 24. So let's read that together. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. We're looking at this passage here today under the heading Treasure Seeking. Now, I don't know about you, but if that heading music gives me thoughts, if you're of a certain age of Long John Silver and uh, Treasure Island, or a younger age group, Jack Sparrow and the Pirates of the Caribbean, the idea of these people on ships and tr- seeking treasure and that. And in a sense, we all are treasure seekers. We all are looking for something very special. And when Jesus speaks about treasure, he is speaking about what we most desire and long for. Now remember the background here. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount is speaking of how we need a righteousness that is greater than the Pharisee. So he's speaking about a righteousness that is within. He's wanting us to have hearts that are right with God and hearts that will seek the right treasure in life. And first of all, as we look at this treasure, we see enduring treasure in verses 19 and to 20. In verse 19, it speaks of how treasures on earth, how they will not last, where moth and rust will destroy them. And so many of the things that people will live for will either be taken away from them in this life or taken away from them when they die. And so, so much of people's time and effort are put into things which will not last. Whereas Jesus in verse 20 speaks about treasures in heaven, which moth and rust cannot destroy, thieves cannot break in and steal, and which will last forever. The wonderful thing is that treasures in heaven are beyond the reach of anyone to take away from us. And so... He is saying, listen, you can work for treasures, which you'll have for a little while, but will disappear. Or you can go for treasures, which will last forever. And of course, you need to seek that heavenly treasure, which will be with you forever. Enduring treasure. And then he speaks of captivating treasure. Look there at verse 21, quite a famous verse. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When it comes to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, what our treasures are will be very important in either helping or hindering us in our discipleship. Treasures can really take hold of people. Treasures are something that people desire and interest people have and that love for that treasure can grow more and more and take up the whole focus of people's lives. And so it is so crucial that we think about what our treasures are. What are the things we desire? What are the things we want? What are the things we're working and living for? And if those things are not Christ, are not those things that Christ wants us to have, we could have our hearts set in a direction which is totally against what God wants. So we have to be so careful. There are things, even legitimate things, which really can take hold of us and distract us from what we really should be focusing on. That leads us to our third point, which is 
eyeing treasure in verses 22 to 23. He says in verse 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. And Jesus is teaching here about the impact of what we set our eyes on. And it's not just what we set our eyes on physically he's talking about. He's talking about the focus of our lives, what we think about, what we dwell on in our thought life. And he says, what we focus on, what we look on, will really impact us. He speaks about if our eye is right, if the lamp is right, the whole body will be right. But he says in verse 23, but if our eye is bad, your whole body will be full of of darkness. And so if we are focusing and looking at the wrong things, this will just bring a, a darkness into our lives. This will dull who we are spiritually. So there's a challenge here. We can either focus on that which will bring light to our souls and help us to love and to follow Jesus, or we can focus on things which will dull our lives. And let's be aware of this. Some of these things which can dull our lives are not necessarily things which are bad in themselves. But they have become too important to us that they have then become bad for us. It can be anything. It can be so many of the hobbies and interests that we have. He says at the end of verse 23, If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? If you're focusing on the wrong things, if you're not focusing on what is right, what is good for you spiritually, where can light come into you? If, if what you focus on really determines the direction of your life. So if you focus on that which brings darkness into you, the darkness of your whole life will be great. And then this brings to the final point, which is competing treasure in verse 24. And here... Jesus says very famous words, No one can serve two masters, for either he'll hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Jesus speaks here of how different masters will compete for our affections. If there are two different things we have an interest in, they are things which will really compete. And what we're being told here is that too much love for earthly things will greatly diminish our love for spiritual things, for the Lord, for that which is heavenly. Notice he says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to one and despise the other. And what we need to realise is that Again, it's even legitimate things. Things that we focus on too much. If we focus on these things too much, it can have a deadening impact on our love for God. And so we have to determine that we have one master. We have to determine that our one master is Jesus, that he is above everything. And everything else in life has to be under his rule. Every interest we have has to be under what Jesus wants for us. And so that, indeed, nothing will compete. It's a wee bit like, let me illustrate this. You have a love for your family and you have a love for Christ. Does that mean that sometimes what our family needs and what Christ calls of us, there might be a conflict? Well, if the way we love our family is ruled by the word of God. If the way we're devoted to our family is guided by scripture, there will not be a conflict. But if our love for our family is something that's not guided by the word of God, if it's something we just decide ourselves, then there will be a competition. So what we have to do is to put the love for Christ above everything else. And the love that we have even for legitimate things has to sit under our love from Christ, flow from our love for Christ. That is to be the key thing. One master, Christ ruling over. And out of our love for Christ, we love our families, we love other things in this world. But our love is under that love for Christ. Take time 
now to consider the different questions. Amen.